market rally to our traders on the floor show. Tom Hayes, let me start with you. I know the answer to this question short term, and it's, yeah, they missed the greatest entry point. But is it better late than never? Should they get in now? Yeah. Um, well, Liz, there's no question. As you said, we're up 40, 44, 45 percent uh, in the short term. And even if we push higher here in the short term, it's OK. Over the summer, we're going to have to digest this quick move. And we are at the beginning of a new cycle. So while in the short term, we've moved a lot and we'll digest that in the intermediate to long term, mm -hmm. this is the beginning of a brand new cycle. So uh, use these opportunities in coming months to add to cyclicals. Why cyclicals? Because those are the sectors that perform the best coming out of a recession in a new cycle, like banks, like defense stocks, like home builders, like energy, like small caps. And even if you've missed out on this 45% move, uh, there's one sector that's still cheap that's lagged behind, and that's banks. 95% of financials have dividend yields greater than the 10-year yield. They're sitting on a half a trillion dollars of cash. They're well capitalized. And the credit reserves uh, that they're going to have to take are smaller than anticipated because of the intervention of the Fed and of the Treasury. So we still like banks here. We like adding cyclicals over the summer on any mini mild pullbacks. And uh, the opportunity is well ahead of us in coming years with all the stimulus, 12% of global GDP fiscal stimulus. We've never seen anything like that. And with uh, earnings estimates for 2021 at $165 a share, we have room to run. And we're going to be seeing new highs in the S&P, too, uh, for sure, in the next 12 months and probably a lot sooner. Yeah, you know, Phil, uh, the Fed meeting, two-day Fed meeting, has just begun today. But let's let's look at sort of a little bit deeper into the weeds here. The price to earnings ratio of some of these names look absolutely crazy. Like the P.E. ratio of Apple right now, I'm not saying that's crazy, but it's around 27, which is historically pretty darn high. Are valuations overly stretched everywhere? Have you dug up some real opportunities? You know, I think we have. I mean, Apple, I do think, is over leveraged right now, and it's not something you would want to add to. It's not something you would want to sell either, necessarily, but I definitely wouldn't be adding it here. But yeah, look at these other opportunities across the board. You know, we were looking at, uh, you know, different sectors here that we had that we thought were pretty weak. You know, I look at planes, trains, and automobiles, right? All of those markets got hit terribly yeah. during the, 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 the coronavirus shutdown. So they, those have come back. Energy, of course, as you, you mentioned uh, ahead with the big run up in oil today, we got a report from the uh, Energy Information Administration that basically came out and said that they were stunned. Well, they didn't use that word, but they basically said, you know, we had to reevaluate everything we thought about energy. We're looking at demand. Demand is coming back a lot faster than we ever anticipated. We're looking at production, and production has fallen a lot faster than people realize. And, and that's why I think a lot of these energy names that have been beat up are really going to perform well. You look at their price to earnings ratios are at historically low levels. Not all of them. Some of them are in financial troubles. But if you got a good balance sheet, energy is going to be a yeah. real good opportunity down here. Yeah, let's let's get back to, to the basics, folks, and make sure that you look at the P.E. ratios before you dive right in. Tom, Phil, great to see you. Thank you so much. No fence sitters here. I know you Thanks guys are invested in what we have to tell you each and every day because, you know, I tell our viewers every time.